linked ourselves with, with the folks on this committee since it's been a while. Um, if you would just uh, go, let's just, let's just go off of each other um, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll start off with a lead in uh, to show you how it's done and then you pick your next person. So uh, Bill Nicely, I'm not an employee, I'm a, I'm a citizen of Kearney and I've been interested in the use tax uh, and volunteer to be on the use tax committee um, because I think the cause is good and, uh, and I'm anxious to see what this use tax can accomplish. Um, and I want to be able to articulate to our community uh, the value that it brings. And so I hope it does bring value and that's sort of what our purpose is here. And next I'll choose Mary Kate. Hello, I'm Mary Kate Demers and I am a citizen of Kearney and uh, I volunteered to be on this committee. Um, well, because I love living in Kearney and I see a lot of uh, great growth and I just wanna be part of it. And okay, I'm gonna throw it to Shauna. Thank you, I'm Shauna Searcy. I'm the director of Kearney EDC and I did, I did um, help drive the use tax initiative when it was on the ballot. So I'm just grateful to have received the invitation to join this group. I, I appreciate the updates and love seeing that it's all moving forward. So thank you for this. I will turn it over to Larry Pratt. Oh, you're muted. I guess I'm just here to watch Dr. Nicely's back. Thanks, Chief, keeping me honest. And turn it over to who? Oh, let's go with uh, Adam, I guess. We got two of them, so I'll jump in there. My name is Adam Musto, and uh, I'm a pastor at the United Methodist Church. Um, Bill and I uh, worked together and he asked if I would do that. And when Bill says jump, I try to say how high. Uh, so I've been looking forward to uh, learning about uh, the civic process and uh, I'm excited to hear about progress. So I will turn it over to Sheila. Hi, I'm Sheila. I am new not to the community or the city of Kearney, but new to working for the city of Kearney and super excited to be here. Um, and I am super excited that uh, the citizens voted and approved the use tax. I think that's going to be uh, very helpful. And I will turn it over to Adam Winker. Muted. Thank you. Um, Adam Lingar, I am uh, lucky enough to live in between Shauna and Dr. Nicely. Um, been, I lived in Kearney for 12 years. My wife's a lifelong resident. I uh, love the community. Uh, my wife teaches a fourth grade uh, at Southview. Um, I do some commercial real estate stuff. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to be here. I'm going to turn it over to, let's go with David Pavlich. Hi, everybody. David Pavlich, city staff person. Um, my involvement in the use tax is related to pathways, so the trails and sidewalks portion of the projects. Um, let's. There's a guy named Randy at the bottom of my screen. He's on mute, though. His mouth isn't moving. Hey, Randy Pogue, Mayor of City of Kearney. I think I'm uh, with Adam here, possibly trying to dodge some rain at football camp. Uh, but um, anyway, uh, I'm just here to uh, show my appreciation and support to, of this committee and uh, appreciate all of your, your work here. Okay, who, who's, who hasn't gone? Eric, have you gone? I have not. 
Hi, I'm Eric Marshall, Director of Parks for the City of Kearney. Um, my interest in the use tax is uh, wonderful things that can happen with the use tax uh, with projects, various projects uh, throughout the community uh, to make the uh, community a, a much nicer place to live. And um, with that, I will uh, turn it over to our city administrator. Thank you, Eric. And my name is Jim Eldridge. I'm the city administrator and here to help implement this use tax and spend those dollars. And so uh, uh, I will introduce Ryan Mark at our assistant park director. Last but not least, I am uh, Ryan Marcotte. I'm entering my 15th year with the city of Kearney as assistant park director. Uh, very proud to be here and uh, very proud that the voters uh, voted yes on this use tax. And I think that's everybody that's on unless somebody else has joined us. I think we're missing Marie Steiner and one other person. The, the, the email said Leslie Harris, is that correct, Jim or David? Yes, we're missing those two and Jacob Klingen Smith. Okay. Yeah, Jacob, uh, he's here at football camp with this little one and will be absent. Okay. Wave him over to your car. Maybe a couple of you football campers can fill him in on what we accomplished today and maybe we'll do a follow up email as well. So let's go ahead and get started on the agenda. Um, if that's okay. Um, we did not meet the previous scheduled meeting. We decided not to do that because we just really didn't have that much information. And the big, the big information of the day is, is the use tax itself um, had been implemented, but we had yet to see any revenue associated with it. Um, and we do have that revenue now stream started, just starting to come in. And um, I think Jim or maybe Sheila would be a good one to Tell us a little bit about, remind us how the use tax is generated, number one, and then um, as indicated on, on the agenda on item A, um, talk about briefly about the collections associated with it and what we anticipate coming on going forward. Go for it, Sheila. I, all I know is it shows up in a bank account and we, we pull it in. So use tax is collected on purchases that are delivered um, from out of, they come from out of state and are delivered to an address in the city of Kearney. And um, so that's, that's how it's generated. Um, never is a sales tax also, it's only sales tax or use tax, never both. It's only one or the other. And um, if the transaction is not subject to sales tax, then the city will be getting use tax for anything that's delivered within city limits. And then the money that has been showing up in the bank the last two months. So we'll get a distribution once a month. And um, in June, the city received $37,161. And in July, $48,082. So we've got our first two months of collection. And that's typically um, two months behind. So typically two months behind. Right. April and May is what we're looking at for collections there. Yep. So a couple of questions associated with this, just to remind everybody, um, Sheila and Jim, we're, with regard to the purchases we're talking about, um, typically large purchases, if somebody buys furniture at Nebraska Furniture Mart or um, a, a vehicle, um, are either one of those end up being used taxes? A vehicle, no. Uh, in Missouri, you pay sales tax uh, at your, for wherever you live. So even if you purchased a vehicle from out of state before the use tax was approved, you would have still been paying uh, sales tax in Missouri. Unless you guys uh, hadn't, unless voters hadn't already approved the uh, 
a fix for the Supreme Court decision had had the that's what this was Sheila that was part of what this was this was that fix. okay yeah this was the uh, putting Sheila on the spot here the new person so so <laughs> sorry about that um but then also like an Amazon purchase from uh, something that was came from out of state that was sold out of state coming coming to a Carney address that would be there would be a tax associated with that um and the idea behind that, the, uh, behind the use tax, is that that the res, um, the those uh, brick and mortar uh, establishments uh, within the city of Kearney, um, everybody pays a tax on that. But what we were seeing was uh, purchases through Amazon and others uh, from places that did not get charged a tax, or if they did, uh, those those dollars didn't end up finding their way back to the city of Kearney. And so um, there, we, it wasn't fair for the brick and mortar folks. So now it is fair, number one. And number two, um, those dollars are now finding their way back to Kearney as they should. So um, I wanna switch to the June and July. And based upon that information, what do we anticipate for um, annual revenue? Well, we've been told by the neighbors that have implemented this in recent years that uh, the startup is slow. And so uh, we are looking at numbers that we think are going to approach. Uh, what we need to average is $50,000 a year to achieve our 600,000 a year. So uh, uh, we're, uh, I think we're gonna climb right into that and, and uh, safely secure our, our uh, annual uh, $600,000 per year. Uh, and hopefully uh, do better than that. But uh, we feel confident enough to, to move forward with our lease purchase financing. We will see for our pickleball courts, we will see uh, August collections come in here at about August the 2nd uh, or the August the 3rd is when they uh, generally, the earliest you can uh, get the uh, report. It actually doesn't come into our bank account until like the 7th, I think. Of the, of the month. Very good. So, um, maybe you can give us an update, send us all an email when that comes in, Jim or Sheila, and um, that, that'll give us a good idea about how comfortable we feel going forward. So all right. any other questions about item A that we didn't already answer from our committee? Bottom line is our prediction is around 600,000 a year and it appears, especially with that July payment that we're gonna approach that and be pretty comfortable uh, with the notion that that could happen. Yes. Consequently, we'll build a budget around that a dollar amount. And so let's uh, jump to um, item B, which is the Cottonwood sidewalk. Yes, uh, David, maybe you can report on that. You brought that opportunity forward to us. Yeah. but you're muted. That's being constructed. And we actually were invoiced and sent out a payment just the other day for that sidewalk section. There, Jim's got the little drawing. So it does uh, a eight foot wide sidewalk connection from the uh, Southern Westwood entrance at uh, Woodridge Road and going south to Cottonwood Creek subdivision was that top priority as part of the use tax uh, election um, last year, or earlier this year. We were able to negotiate uh, that with uh, McConnell through their lease purchase financing uh, contract that they use in, uh, in, it's a Texas cooperative purchasing contract that state of Missouri actually encourages us to be using. So uh, uh, we're pleased to be able to get that work underway. And the $103,000 that it cost was, uh, we thought was too good to pass up. And so uh, we, we proceeded with it and pleased that we, that we have. The eight foot sidewalk is, so the one of the categories that was spelled out in the election was, uh, was, tr was sidewalks and trails. And so this, this fulfills that category and it was a priority for the city. Eight foot wide sidewalk uh, means that on that busy road, both, both walking pedestrian and bicyclists can use that 
um, that sidewalk. And it's um, particularly good because it, it, it uh, ultimately makes its way to Dogwood Elementary. So it's great for those elementary kids. Um, we are, according to what we just heard, we're in the hole $103,000 for that sidewalk and anticipating those good revenues to come in. Questions about the sidewalk? Mayor, or, if I may, uh, if mayor is in attendance, uh, that's one of the things that um, Mayor Pogue said he would like to see right off the bat. Um, and it makes it safe for parents and the children uh, heading to school, which um, I don't think you can put a dollar amount on safety, especially with uh, kids trying to get to, to school and, and parents escorting their kids instead of having to drive to school, um, make it a, a much nicer and safer place um, for people to get to school. Thank you, Eric. Any questions associated with the Cottonwood sidewalk or sidewalks in general? Going to pickleball, which this seems to be rather exciting for a lot of people. Um, let's hear where we are with the pickleball courts and anything associated with that. Eric, I'll share the screen and you take the, the narrative, would you? Or, well, um, first of all, we, we did, we were able to uh, uh, get their plans completed and we've uh, secured a, uh, a proposal from uh, McConnell and Associates also using the, uh, the uh, TIPS cooperative purchasing contract uh, out of Texas. And uh, they uh, they have identified the costs uh, on this on this proposal. Uh, one of the things that was asked of me is how much does the baseball field drainage uh, going to be spent on that, which is essentially our cost of acqu acquiring the land from the school. And uh, if you can see my screen, that number is eighty one thousand six hundred and sixty dollars, which is well within the range that we expected that that land would, would be worth. And so we're, we're uh, pleased to be able to do that work for the school in consideration for that, for, for them deeding the land to us. Um, the, the itemizations go on down uh, with, with uh, the, the, this, this thing is gonna include the, the bathroom and there's a lot of things, elements in here that are included. One of the, uh, and, and we get up with a $1.7 million project, but we came across our pickleball court and, and recognized that we had done nothing to the pickleball court. We didn't, uh, we didn't plan for upgrading the fence or redoing the pavement or anything. Skate and we park. Thought, Let's, mm, the skate park. I'm sorry. We, the, the skate park was, was, uh, was being left without any improvement at all. And we thought we can't, we can't let that happen. Park board pointed that out, out to us and so we're going to go ahead and remove that that uh, pavement and and put in pretensioned concrete in the expectation that someday, if the uh, pickleball court complex is that successful, that we could convert that area to four more uh, courts in the future. And so uh, uh, and and this will have new fencing and new lighting, and that ends up costing about two hundred thousand dollars. And so that, that runs it up to right, right, right under $2 million is what this is gonna cost, which is more than what, uh, when we initially put together a budget, it started out 1.5 million. And, and then before we approved our budget, it was 1.85 million. So uh, it's simply, uh, this is what's needed. We've met with the, 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 uh, uh, the folks that are involved in pickleball and, uh, we're satisfied that what we're doing is is going to be good for uh, the entire project. Um, uh, the the, the uh, this is another cost estimate from our from our engineer, which we're very 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 close in numbers. And so this area right here is uh, where uh, we we've actually have it marked off as pickleball courts, but this is going to be the skate park area. And so. Uh, 
uh, it, it'll it'll stay a skate park park until we find another location for the skate park. Uh, but uh, if, if that if that is destined to be, um, but right now we we simply we're going to have a nice uh, you know it's everything's going to look new there. It's going to be a beautiful uh, complex uh, that required us. Uh, th I'm showing you a picture now of the drainage way. Excuse me, backed up too soon. That's the trouble with my. Uh, uh, th this is uh, this is the, these are pipes are showing drainage uh, that, that's going to fix the, the the softball field. So uh, I, I've given you a lot of plans to look at, maybe too many, but um, wanted you to see everything. Uh, let you know that there is a lot of engineering involved in this, and um, uh, it's it's essentially ready to go. And uh, what we lack like now is financing and uh, uh, the approval from the Board of Aldermen to a lot of contract with McConnell. So we're very close. Uh, it's gonna be used in uh, Musco lighting, which is uh, the industry's best lighting. Uh, so we're really pleased with, with uh, how it's been put together. Jim, Eric, if I may. To... Yeah, go ahead. Jim, if I may say, uh, you might wanna uh, let the board know that uh, this land was in a land and water conservation fund area. And you might explain that to some people that might not understand that. Yeah. And I can uh, actually share the boundary. I have that up if you'd like. Well, there is a grant program called, it's been around for uh, 50 years or so, the land and water conservation grant, which is a federal program uh, that's administered through our local Department of Natural Resources in the state of Missouri. And uh, in 1980, when uh, they built those uh, initial uh, tennis courts on the school's property, they used, they used uh, land and water conservation grant money. And that perpetually commits that ground to be forever outdoor uh, recreation. And uh, when, we took, when we assumed it with the school, we did know this, and our use was was exactly outdoor uh, 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 recreation. So we knew we weren't going to have any problems with that. And uh, although we're not getting any grant money from from the uh, land and water folks this time around, uh, it uh, we we uh, are, uh, are because of the land transaction, we're going to assume those same commitments that the uh, school had assumed on the portion of ground they deed us. There's actually 14 acres they're gonna deed us, I think three acres more back to us, almost four acres. And 4.16, so, yeah. Yeah, the school will still retain about 10 acres of the ground. And that has that involves their practice field area and their uh, baseball field area. And of course it, it's, as far as they're concerned, forever outdoor activities that will be used there as well. So it's, uh, it's simply paperwork that has to be done with the federal government through the state agencies. Thank goodness. And Jim and Eric, if I may, um, I wanted to add that uh, when you were reviewing the Musco lighting, that's actually the old design. A new design has come in, what, Eric, at the end of last week? That's uh, correct. With, with the two lanes instead of the one lane. So they, they tweaked the lighting on that. Okay, so I didn't have the new plans in my in my uh, distribution. I didn't look like it. No. Okay, thanks. Well, I think the numbers are new. I believe that to be yeah. The yes. numbers are correct. It's just the numbers, actual the numbers are consistent. Yeah, the numbers are correct. This the actual design is going to be a little different. Yes, on the lighting. The purpose of uh, letting everybody know about the DNR, the previous DNR grant is uh, just simply to say that that, that area, um, according to the DNR grant, has to be used for outdoor activities for the residents uh, of our area into perpetuity. And this new uh, use and ownership by the city and then continued use by the pickleball court suffices to fill that responsibility of outdoor activities, if the city decided they were going to put a put a uh, you know a, an indoor um, city hall there, they they would not be able to do that. DNR would not approve that. So, so we're within the 
uh, use guidelines of the original DNR grant, which is a great thing. Um, I, I have a question about that the cost uh, of the pickleball court. Everybody is excited to see the pickleball court upgraded. We know we need more of them. Um, improving the skate park is a bonus. Um, you know, we're looking at a couple million dollars almost to do this. Um, tell, talk to us about financing and uh, the rationale behind the, the cost of it. Um, and then the, the payoff of that grant uh, over the course of years, um, utilizing that use tax. And then we'll open it up for qu other questions folks might have. We contemplated uh, a financing of at least $2 million to actually cover the cost of the pickleball court and Hall Park. And uh, we uh, um, don't have Hall Park down the road far enough uh, to, to give, get numbers on that. We are also applying for uh, a, we're preparing a grant for our land and water conservation uh, grant uh, through the, the parks that we uh, anticipate on submitting this fall uh, for Hall Park. And so we, we uh, contemplate uh, if we're successful, uh, we'll be able to have more uh, experience on our, on our funding and uh, be able to pick up the Hall Park piece next year. And we'll probably couple it with, uh, with the water department financing we're contemplating doing. And, but we'd like to proceed with solely with uh, the pickleball court. Uh, and we, we definitely have enough money to, uh, to fund that. Uh, we're securing our amortization schedules, our new schedules from uh, uh, Piper Sandler. Todd Goffey at Piper Sandler is working on that along with uh, our uh, Gilmore and Bell, our bond councils. So uh, we're hoping to have that something we can take to our board of aldermen in August. Uh, uh, that and uh, uh, the contract with McConnell. So uh, uh, yes, for the next, uh, we were looking at a, I think a, a 20 year financing on it. So, so it's gonna, it's gonna take, it's gonna take some time to pay it off, but uh, we have, uh, that was a contemplated with our, with the whole project was we were gonna do debt financing on two projects. And uh, all I can tell you is about the whole park is, is that we think we'll find room and we'll find grant money to leverage uh, those costs and, and undertake that next year. What, what questions do our committee have around the financing or the pickleball court? Is there, I realize it hasn't been, you know, fully approved or, or any such thing, but do you have a estimated projection as to well as can be completed? Is this a 2023 completion date? Is it this year? Pickleball? Yeah, yes, sir. So we were hoping to, to get underway this fall and have a uh, spring, like spring, summer opening. Got it, okay, thank you. And folks, now might be a good time to add, there are a couple of incidentals that are not included on the actual plan cost estimates from McConnell. Um, those would be uh, benches for spectators, um, as well as uh, one to two outbuildings. Um, and in addition to that, uh, security cameras for the entire facility, we anticipate no more than 20,000 for all of that. And that would be included in the 2 million. Jim, I don't know if anybody mentioned, you know, we talked about pickleball and skate park and, and things of that nature, but um, in those plans, um, um, you know, cause we've talked about trails as well, but the, the restrooms, um, we would like to put the, uh, restroom, which would be like the restroom we have down in Lions Park, um, which would not only be used by the skate park and pickleball users, but would be butted right up next to the trail, um, uh, which would be ideal for the trail walkers that, uh, uh, many, uh, have utilized and that would just be another added bonus uh, for people of the community as they uh, use our trails. 
I'm assuming there's going to be like a water access there, like a water fountain for people or not. Absolutely. Um, okay. On the, um, the actual bathroom building itself, there will be a, uh, on the front of the building, there will be a uh, drinking fountain there. And then also down by the pickleball court, we are running uh, extra line for a, um, a drinking fountain um, oh. as well. So there's going to be two locations for uh, people to have access for uh, drinking water. Is that on the plans? Is that shown on the plan? It is. Um, it's right on the corner of um, the north end of the pickleball courts on that uh, concrete slab. And it does have this drinking fountain that we're talking about down by the uh, pickleball courts has a water, bill, uh, water fill station uh, for water bottles. Uh, it has a um, pet um, watering station. Uh, we added uh, a spigot so we could uh, power wash the courts if need be. And also um, if uh, when we have tournaments or uh, they have a large gathering uh, at times and people bring water cooler, there'll be also a water cooler um, attachment on to that actual um, drinking fountain as well. So, okay. I see a water line running down to uh, the pickleball courts. For you a, can see it, it. It looks like right just a little nib, right? Yeah, yeah. correct. Right there. Okay, we, we'll, we'll, we'll suffice it to say that we're going to have water bottle, water bottle filling station and, and dogs. How it gets yes. done is to you guys. Right. Um, thank you. Other, other questions. Essentially, what we're saying is that, is that the, this, this is a rather expensive initiative. It was something everybody wants, uh, but a loan will be taken out and we'll pay for it over a period of time. And a certain amount of dollars each year will be encumbered out of the, uh, out of the budget. To, to pay this down. And then the rest of the dollars that are unencumbered can uh, be utilized for some other projects. Is that accurate? Very accurate. I wish I could have said that for you. So I, I got a question. Yeah. Speaking of cumbered or unencumbered, will the construction affect the use of the current um, courts and will they be able to use those unencumbered like for the fall when they start construction? I'm afraid we're going to have to do a tear out and they're prepared. The pickleballers have told us they're prepared to, uh, to set and wait uh, when that happens. There's Thank just you. no way to, no way to do, uh, to do a, uh, a, a, you know, a, a partial, a partial sure. bill. I bet Thank they're excited though. I mean, right. There's those cracks. They are, they need some, need some freshening up. So I bet they're probably okay with that. Okay, that's great. Other questions associated with that? Okay, let's. Um, I just uh, I just lost my screen on the agenda. Um, somebody jump to the next thing so I can pull it back up. Porter Park Trail connection. Yeah, that'd be great. So that, that is what is next on our agenda is, is uh, we have prepared a grant application. David, do you know uh, what the status is of that? Yeah, there, there are two phases to the grant application process. Phase one was submitted in June. There's a phase two submittal that's due at the end of this week. So um, I started reviewing, well, we've got, the city has two application submittals. One of them is the Mac Porter Park Trail Connection. Um, reviewing that today and tomorrow, and Trans Systems is our consultant helping us out with those application forms. We'll get that uh, in by the end of this week. I spent some time during this meeting looking to see if there was a date for review uh, timeframes uh, by Mark. Couldn't find anything. I assume that uh, August, September is uh, or September, October will be about the time that they will. Uh, uh, score and, and grade those applications. And this is 
it would be for 2025, 26 funding, I believe. They go out a few fiscal years in advance. So we'll have a chance to plan for this. Right. And it, we do recognize the numbers on it on this particular project are going to be well above our $150,000 annual budget. So it could be that we'll, we'll if we get our grant funding, uh, we're seeking $500,000. Is that right, David? Uh, yeah, the application's more, but I think I think they have marked down a little too much. We're going to verify the numbers. Overall project cost is $880,000 in their estimate. So it might be different on your screen, Jim. I'm looking at the application submittal. Okay. Can you guys um, answer this question? The, the fact that we're applying for a, a grant to cover um, this very important project to me personally, but, um, but I'll, I'll also recognize that this project really connects our city parks uh, and makes them accessible by by walking or by bicycle, which is quite amazing and something that will make a really good talking point. But the question is that this grant that we're applying, is it beneficial in the selection process of which grants gets funded and which grants get don't uh, when cities and municipalities like um, Kearney say that we have matching dollars to put towards this? Yeah, there's a match that is required. You, you've got you've to have a match and they have a, a pretty complex scoring system. Um, so they look at a lot of things as far as, oh, connectivity, uh, uh, activity centers. So areas where there are churches and shopping and uh, neighborhoods, um, park connections. Are there other development or are there other plans like park plans or metro wide plans for greenways that uh, the project is consistent with. So there's pretty extensive scoring, pretty competitive too. It's similar monies that uh, grant monies that we got for the uh, Dogwood sidewalk project we built a couple of years ago. That one, that one took us several years. Uh, our application was in for probably four or five years before we were uh, awarded funding for that. Gotcha. Questions about this part of the project? We may be waiting a little bit before we receive. Be. The... We'll keep asking the question. Okay. And then is Hall Park similar to that? I know we're getting down on the agenda rate with regard to items that we have spent less time planning for but are still uh, sort of as promised items. Is that correct? Yes. Well, uh, Hall Park is, is very important to us. It's, it is one of the ones we promised, but uh, we, we recognize that uh, it's, we have a good opportunity to apply for grant funding through the Land and Water Conservation Fund. Uh, they, they, uh, they, if we could secure funding through them, uh, I think it would be a, a, a big boon to this project. And, uh, certainly is always good to leverage our dollars um, by getting more dollars, use, by using our dollars to get more dollars. So um, we have hired Steve Casey and Steve uh, got us the grant for the spray park. And uh, he's, uh, he, he, he's uh, the full-time employee for the city of Lee Summit in their park department, but he runs a side gig where he, uh, where he is a landscape architect and he's, he is preparing a grant application for us, he gave us this proposal. The Board of Aldermen approved this back in April, I think. And, or maybe it was May, uh, the date is April. So um, the board probably took it up in April and, and have, have authorized this to be proceed. And so uh, we have high hopes that, that Steve will uh, prepare an, an attractive application and uh, we, uh, we like our chances. That's great. Talk to us about some of the amenities we're looking at right here. Eric or Ryan, tell them about this park. Sure. Before I we talked about the amenities, we were on the phone last week with uh, LWCF and we were uh, reminiscing about our, our Lions Park. And she said, you have anything uh, 
on the horizon. And we told them that uh, we do with Hall Park. And she said, what type of a park? And I, uh, we, we mentioned that it's a senior theme park. And they were excited to hear that um, uh, it, it would be specifically geared towards the seniors of the community. Uh, we've done things for the, the youth. And um, uh, they said, uh, we'll be looking forward to, to seeing that come through this fall uh, as they take a look at all the all the projects and uh, this round of applications we can apply for 500,000 um, of grant money where Lions Park was only a, a 250 but um, our park board has approved this but one of the the things that Ryan and I are really excited about um, is the outdoor, fitness equipment uh, stations that we would like to implement into this park. Um, the, the little meandering trail that we have through there would be uh, really flat for the seniors. Um, and then they could stop off at different stations. Um, and these are all pneumatic outdoor sealed uh, fitness equipment. Um, so they stay out uh, year round. Um, so even in the cold days where it's not just blustery, um, people can walk that park and take advantage of, uh, fitness equipment, uh, strengthening their upper body, their lower body, their core. Um, and, um, that's one of the things Ryan and I really wanted to see when we first started developing this and Ryan, you can interject, uh, with some other things that you, that you like. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I do want to add, um, you know, a lot of people get in their heads this this concept of, you know, 1970s and 1980s parks, fitness equipment. Um, this is this is light years beyond that. Um, you know, in the past, they had uh, essentially pull up bars and rings and that sort of thing. This stuff is really cutting edge. It's all like Eric said, sealed piston pneumatic resistance. Um, it's it's really going to be a boon for the community, we think. Um, it's used in, in hospitals. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's good stuff. Um, in addition to those, uh, we have a 30 by 30 shelter right at the entrance to the park, um, that we will plan on, uh, renting out as well as a 12 by 12 shelter, uh, kind of on the backside of the trail. Um, and it, it, it's going to be a really serene, um, space for, for our seniors and, uh, it's something that, you know, is, is near and dear to my heart in this community and uh, something that we're just really excited about. We're planning on, um, you'll see on there, uh, possibly a croquet area, uh, shuffleboard, horseshoes, that sort of thing. Um, we're, we're also kind of thinking about maybe tweaking the croquet area into more of a flat surface for like a yoga type class thing that might be, we might be able to offer in the park. So uh, I think we will use this space extremely well. And uh, we are very, very thankful to the Hall family for donating uh, this, these grounds to us. One thing that uh, we haven't mentioned is this will be a dusk, uh, dawn to dusk park where it will not be lit. Uh, that way it doesn't intrude on the, uh, the neighbors to the North. Um, so that is one thing. There will be no outdoor uh, lighting uh, to disrupt their lives um, in the evening time. And I, I can't remember, did you maybe remind everybody as to the location? I can't even hear. I can't hear. I can. It's so uh, this is. Go ahead. At 92 Highway and Prospect Street at the north east corner of prospect and just candy corner from the uh, fire stations parking lot if you know where that is on prospect i think the great thing about that location is it's also within walking distance just down prospect to our downtown area yes and uh although the parking lot is small here uh we we uh we recognize that half a block away is the, the school parking lots that uh, are quite often unused on the weekends. So uh, we think parking is close. 
Can I ask a question about it? Um, so is this going to have also have like security cameras and everything in this park, like the pickleball one? Absolutely. 100%. Okay. Uh, we don't plan on doing a new park project in the future without security cameras from now on. Oh, awesome. Thanks. Will there be restrictions on who can reserve the shelters or is it open as, as the other parks? You gotta be 55 years old, Shauna. Okay. No, I'm, I, I don't know that. That's why I was asking. I, I didn't know <laughs> if it was if it was specific. To I just um, know that. So that's Thank something you. we'll look at uh, on, on the park board level. Um, we are definitely open to recommendations that we can carry to the park board with that. Uh, we would like to keep it, you know, a senior theme park. And, you know, really have it be a space for our seniors in this community. So, um, you know, there's, uh, I'm going to say, and I think Eric would agree that everything is on the table right now. We haven't gotten down to the nitty gritty as far as park rules. But that being said, there will definitely be park rules. Shauna, if, like, if you would like for me to reserve it for you, wink, wink, nudge, <laughs> nudge, just let me know. <laughs> Honestly, I was, oh. No, I'm not, I'm not. I was pro reserving it for seniors only. Um, I'm open to whatever, but I don't need it. There's several other parks for us. Uh, yeah, I agreed. That was being facetious. <laughs> but next year you can. <laughs> right. Quest questions about the um, Hall Park. It just sounds fantastic. Okay, we have a few other promises that we've made to the public with regard to these dollars. I know they we haven't made much progress on them, but they're still worth talking about. Yes, and sir. Uh, we we introduced to the uh, we had shown you guys uh, our tentative budget back in January, and uh, that actually got presented to the board of aldermen pretty much as as it was presented to you all, and so. We, we, uh, we are, uh, have given the green light to our police department to proceed and secure hiring two new police officers. And uh, we uh, are having just as much trouble as every other police agency in the nation on filling police officers right now. But, uh, but that is, but they've been green lighted and have been told to proceed. So uh, we're doing our best with that. Uh, and our, our final item would be uh, the uh, animal control officer, and uh, uh, we plan on working on that this fall and hopefully securing a, 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 a control officer with, with uh, an equipment and vehicle. And, uh, and uh, our contemplation is, is that uh, right now we work with uh, Long Veterinary Clinic to handle our uh, our the dogs that we catch during you know during cold periods of time, uh, they they end up being our kennel service, and uh, we very much probably continue that uh, for now. And uh, there's not a, there's no contemplation to immediately um, build a uh, shelter of our own, uh, thinking that this is really the best way to address it. And we we took that uh, suggestion from Dr. Lear. He he thought that. Uh, uh, you know, he's, he's seen these uh, shelters get overwhelmed once they get built. And, uh, and um, so I, I think he's given us some good advice. So that, that's, that, those are all the projects. So, so they're in our budget. They are, uh, they, they've been listed and uh, we're not going to forget them. So the, the budget is really a good document to reference because it does call out all of the community promises made with this use tax. Um, obviously, they're going to they're we're going to prioritize some of the others, but they're all in play at some at some point. Um, and and I, I would like to say or just sort of remind everybody that our role is to verify or keep the city honest is a good way to characterize it. Verify that they. They are indeed pursuing those things that were promised to the community. And our job is to, as verifiers, is to, to say and to communicate that either they are or they're not doing that. So if you have not seen evidence that you want to see that, that um, 
that shows the city is keeping its promise, then it's really important for you to speak up and ask more questions. Um, and if you are comfortable with what you've seen as, as evidence, it's really important for you to speak up and say, listen, I belong to this committee and this use tax um, is being uh, carried out exactly as promised. And with that, I'll leave the floor open for anybody who has additional questions. Or comments, please make a comment. I think it looks great. I don't. I don't know that I have a lot of comments, um, but obviously, you all put a lot of work, and some of these designs are so exciting. Obviously, you haven't. You no, know, you haven't missed a thing. Um, so I know it's mostly design work at this point, but it looks really exciting. I just. Look forward to seeing more numbers <laughs> to piece it all together. This is really an uncomfortable pause. Mary Kate, were you going to say something? Oh, well, okay. I was going to say that I, I am thrilled also with all the progress you guys have made and with the designs. And I think it's just you guys just continuing to make Kearney a great place to live. And and I have to say, I'm really excited about the shuffleboard at the, at the Senior Citizens Park because if you don't have to be 55 to use it, my family's going to be there a lot because we're shufflers. So that, that's exciting. Watch out. Anything I'll just add my you? thanks, Dr. Nicely, for heading up the committee and um, everyone there at the city and parks for all their hard work. Appreciate it. It's exciting. We continue to improve. That is the goal. Jim, do we have an idea about a next meeting? Um, I, I suppose if we're going to do them quarterly, would uh, would October be uh, okay? October the uh, and we'll do it like the towards the end. October the, I guess the uh, the last the fourth Tuesday. What would that be? That'd be uh, Tuesday the twenty fifth. Does that sound reasonable? Thumbs up if October 25th seems reasonable. And for those that um, watch this recording afterwards, they can make note of that if they wanted to tune into the next meeting for more excitement. I will be out for that one, but that's not a reason not to do it. We'll miss you. I, I know a couple of familiar faces on the screen, so I can I can get caught up pretty good. Yes, sir. Well, I, I want to thank everybody from the city for uh, prioritizing this. It's it's clear that you've done a lot of work, and to put these plans together is, is no small matter. That's for sure. Um, so thanks for your the work that you've done up to this point, and good luck with the additional grants. Uh, if there's anything we can do to pull some strings, let us know, and um, We'll look forward to more progress before that October meeting, Jim, if you don't mind um, next month when you get those use tax numbers in, um, just sending out a quick email uh, to update us. That'd be awesome. I'll do it. Okay. Thank Great you to very see much. You.